Hi everybody, this is Dee Dee from Haunted Curiosities and I have with me Heather today. Um, we are sitting inside of Connectivity House and she's going to explain a little bit about who she is and what she does. So, like Dee Dee said, my name is Heather and I've been around for quite a long time. I work for Dee Dee every now and then. Um, I've been working off and on for about 12 years now. Um, Dee Dee and I are pretty close and I absolutely love what I do. And it's funny that Dee Dee mentioned my name. My actual name is Nymphadora Block One. Block one. Block one, yes. Now, I know that I'm gonna ask her questions for those of you that are listening. I, I already know what block one means, but I'm gonna let her explain it to you. So, block one is technically what your last name would be. Back when I was born, I was born anywhere between like 2000 BC, 2500 BC. Back then, we didn't have actual last names. Our last names were actually what our families did as a profession or an area where we lived. And I'm from Samaria, so a lot of the areas were pertaining to what your family did as a profession. You know, there was alchemists, and they were in a special section of the city. There were prostitutes, of course, they had their own section of the city. But my family was actually a lot different. We held many different roles, and so... Well, and I don't want to interrupt you, of course. but as soon as she said prostitutes, I have to, I have to bring this up. Um, because you're sitting it, you're sitting here in a negligee. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Which um, is not something we would normally videotape, but there is a reason that you're in that negligee. Before we get into your whole family yes. history, and why are you in the negligee tonight? As I am coming in here. <laughs> so you caught me after I got done doing a service for a couple. Um, it was a sexual transformation. What happened was they had contacted me because the husband, let's put it this way, he wanted a bigger package. A bigger package. He did. And so his wife also has trouble reaching orgasm. Okay. So they came to me for help. They've heard from different people that I was somebody that they could come to that could probably help them. And they're actually from Hong Kong. So they flew here. I did what I needed to do. Um, and what, was, exactly, what exactly do you do? in a sexual transformation? Like, is there touching of their private parts? Oh, or no, definitely not. Is there um, any sex? Not with me, anyway. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> in this particular transformation, we did need to have them have sexual intercourse, but- But you don't watch it, right? I do not, Okay. No, I take their word for it. Um, I, I can kind of see you with their lying, telling the truth on how things are, but it's actually multiple sessions. Um, the first session, I do, you know, just different things, trying to figure out what needs to be done for each one. And then I not only help them physically with what they need, I also help them um, psychologically in the brain to, you know, make sure that they're 100% satisfied with each other as well as their bodies, because that's very important when it comes to sex. And then afterwards, I, I let them be together, see if the session worked. If not, then I go back and I try and tweak things. Now, usually um, it does always work, but you do, you were telling me you do one session. Normally, yes. And then they sleep with each other, and then mm -hmm. if they're happy, you continue with two more to... I, I do two more just to make sure everything took okay. You know, I when I do things, I want to make sure that they are 100% satisfied. I hate sending people home and then having them call me or try and get in contact with me later saying something didn't take properly. So what I do is I do the extra sessions. It's extra time for me, but it's making sure that my job is 100% done properly and that the people are happy with whatever they needed done. With, with the woman um, and her having a problem with orgasm, was it psychological with her or was it physical? It was definitely psychological. Okay. Yes. So how do you, how do you fix something like that? Is that, do you use the healing touch with the mind and the brain or is it like, how do you? Normally that's what I do. Um, I have to like look inside to see what her issue is because nine times out of 10 when it comes to women, it's their body. Okay. They have an issue. Even though she's been married to her husband for 14 years and she's had children, so that has definitely taken a toll on her. And even though her body is gorgeous, I think so anyway, she as a person feels that her children have done damage 
and her husband actually has told her multiple times that she's perfectly fine the way she is but inside she felt like she wasn't enough for her husband and that definitely played a big role in her orgasming and what about her um what, what, what about the husband like the husband just unfortunately he was born chinese and they're not gifted as some of others are but he he was a great guy he loved his wife and he he wanted to please her every way he could so he thought maybe if he was a little bit bigger even though his package i thought was perfectly fine he physically so you wasn't. saw it you saw i it. did see it i did but you didn't touch ask it. though i did not <laughs> i did not touch it i did not he he wanted me to see it only because he wanted me to have a visual of what it was and what he needed okay um, there are people that are going to watch this video and they're <laughs> going to say, she said, oh, it's because he's Chinese, but you're, you're not being not racist in any way not at because all. that's actually no. what he told you, that right? It, yes, definitely. That he, he felt that, that. It's not necessarily that it's, chi that he's Chinese. It's that his family, just the men were not gifted in his family. So he, and they, they, he thought it was because he was Chinese, oh, yes. not you, right? Yes, yes. He, he it was but he ended up talking with his family and found out that it's just just a very bad gene in their family and he has well I just I just wanted to clarify that yes you no. weren't saying oh well Chinese <laughs> men not you know all, have, you know all. small packages there no not at all not okay at all. so what are what are some of the other um, uh, well, I guess first tell me about your family and okay. some of the gifts that they have. So my family, like I said, um, normally in Samaria, the people had a gift, but it was normally just one gift and that was something that they shared throughout their family. But my family, we had multiple gifts. Like um, my mother was a healer. She was very good at what she did. And back then we had doctors and things like that, but a lot of people would get sick and no one would know what they were. And a lot of the things that they would get sick from um, nobody had names for them, so they would just go to the doctor with their symptoms and they would try and figure out what is wrong with them. And nine times out of ten, they couldn't heal these people, and so they would start coming to my mother because she not only could heal them, but she could physically see what was inside them, exactly where it was, and was able to pull it out of them. It was quite fascinating to see. And she was very, very good at it. And she was saving lives. And so she was a great healer. Um, I had a brother who was... Um, now, is he still alive? Is he like you? Is he a universal immortal? My brother is, yes. My okay, brother, he is. My brother um, was actually wanting me to pass on. Because my gift that I have is I'm immortal. I'm a, what they call a universal immortal. But back then, they had the name Split Immortal. Why did they call it Split Immortal? Because it was something... You were like on two planes? Yeah, that's exactly what it was. Okay. And um, I'm able to share the gift with others, but they have to be willing to accept it and be fully committed to it. And some people were, um, my brother included, but then there was others that just didn't want that extra gift. They didn't want to be immortal. My brother was one of those that did, which is actually kind of beneficial for me because he could also, his special gift was he could see into the future. And so he could see when, you know, bad things were gonna happen. He's also saved many lives from, you know, different natural disasters that were about to take place. Um, and what about your sister? You were telling me something about your sister that she was a great telepath. Yes. But like all the things that your family has, you, you have every one of them. Yes. But yes. they each only had like one thing. Right. With me being the youngest of all of them, I was able to attain a piece of each of my siblings. And so I'm able to see into the future. I'm able to be a telepathic. I can heal. I can do multiple things like that. Um, but the best part is my bloodline comes from the bloodline of Lilith. And with that, we are going to stop. And we will start our next video shortly just to make sure that we upload this. So we will be right back, everyone.